It's the e-commerce master plan podcast here to help you solve your marketing problems and grow your e-commerce business. Cutting through the hype to bring you inspiration and advice from the e-commerce sector and beyond. Here's your host, Chloe Thomas. Hello and welcome to our latest podcast. I'm Chloe and as it always is, it's awesome to have so many of you out there listening. Every time I look at the stats, I cannot believe how many of you there are and how many varied countries you are in. So thank you for coming back time and again to listen. It's time for another podcast from our 2020 e-commerce master plan growth series sponsored by Omnisend and it's a corker. Whilst we're really focused on growth this month, of course, we all have to focus on growth and achieving our goals month in, month out. You can't forget about growth once January is over. So in today's episode, I'm chatting to someone who's relatively early in their business journey and who contacted me to see if he could share his growth journey step by step on the podcast. I, of course, said yes, as I thought it was an awesome idea. And he's going to be coming back on the podcast later this year to let us know how his growth focus is going. So think of this as our before episode. But don't think that means you're not going to get much from it because he shares a host of great book and podcast recommendations. He shares how he's learned huge amounts about his customers and products over the last year and how that's going to supercharge his marketing over the next three months. He shares some great Google shopping campaigns advice and his growth plan for the next three months. If any of you are stuck on your About Us page, which I know a lot of you are, or your welcome campaign, then the recommendations he gives around that are really, really good. I may be stealing those and telling them to many more people over the coming months myself. Before we get into all of that, make sure you check out our sponsors. Omnisend, the marketing automation platform tailored for e-commerce. Omnisend provides sophisticated omnichannel marketing automation tools for sales-driven marketers that have outgrown generic email marketing platforms. Engage your customers and boost your e-commerce sales with dynamic emails, text messages, Facebook Messenger and retargeting ads on Facebook and Google, all from just one platform. Try Omnisend for free for 14 days. Just visit omnisend.com forward slash master plan and get started. I have owned and read hundreds of business books. This is probably one of the best on e-commerce. I recommend it for experienced owners and especially newbies. I wish I had this book years ago. That's what an anonymous Amazon.co.uk reviewer said about my new book, e-commerce marketing, how to get traffic that buys to your website. You can follow their advice and grab the Kindle or paperback on your local Amazon store now. Or if you're not quite ready to commit to buying the book, head to ecommercemarketingbook.com to get the free crash course, including the first two chapters. And now to introduce today's special guest. Simon Driscoll is the founder and sole person at UXB Skincare, a business he founded in 2018 with a mission to develop affordable skincare products that really make a difference to customers' skin. Hello, Simon. Hi, Chloe. How are you doing? Yeah, good, good. Great to have you on because I know you're a listener. So um, it's it's always nice to have a listener on the show. Long-term listener, first-time caller. (laughs) Indeed. Well, look, I've given our listeners a, a super quick overview of you and the business, but let's get started at the start. Uh, how did you get started in e-commerce? So um, I started developing skincare about three years ago. And um, so I've learned how to make it. Um, and for the past year, I've been selling at markets. Um, I have had a website up, up and running. Um, but I've not really paid much attention to the to the website. I've mainly been selling face to face, just to make sure that my products are um, uh, uh, good for the customers. They work, uh, and I and I've kind of got an idea of of how to sell. Um, so I'm in a position now where I think I can I can put put the the, the foot to the pedal on the website and um, stop standing in the cold selling my skincare wares. <laughs> I I love the fact you started off at, with the markets because quite often when we have people on the show, they give that as a piece of advice for people who are just starting up is to, to go out there, put your product in front of people and learn what they actually think about it, what they'll actually pay for, yeah. you know, pay for it. Have you found, was that always part of your plan was to get out in front of people or were you always 
Has it kind of been an accident and you were actually aiming to go e-commerce? I always wanted to do e-commerce, but um, I, I, the market thing was because I didn't know what I was doing when it came to marketing. So I actually mm -hmm. thought it would probably be best before I spend a load of money on marketing to um, to sell face to face, and and it's been a real learning opportunity because, you know, all all the things I've, I have learned over the past few months about marketing, and about how how to put together offers, I, I've kind of validated that it works when I'm selling face to face. So um, there's a lot of things I'm going to be putting into place in the next three months that um, I know work because I've I've done them um, uh, over the past year. So. I suppose you you know the phrases that the customers are using. You know what combinations of products are working well together, which makes ad copy and product copy so much easier to write, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah, um, I, I know how to how to upsell. I know to bundle things together. Um, I know which which parts of the ingredients are important. Which which uh, how to describe the effects of of the skincare. So um, it's it's going to be it's going to be really helpful having that year's worth of of selling, and also. Um, when it comes to, because I'm I'm going to be selling or advertising mainly on on face Facebook and Instagram, and that's very much audience based. So I've, I've noticed that selling at different markets with different audiences, what what effect that can have on how much I sell. So there's re it really does transfer all of the all of this year's worth of markets I've done really will hopefully transfer into into selling online. It immediately gives you a, an angle above those who haven't because you know, you see, you've looked the customers in the eye, you've got an idea of what their demographics are, you've got an idea of what other things they're interested in. Exactly. It's priceless, really. Yeah, it, it, it is. Um, and it just just hearing them say say things to me, I just, you know, immediately, as soon as they walk away from my stall, I've written their stuff down about how they talk about stuff. So I have, it's been a, it's been a huge learning experience. Um, so hopefully it really help. Have you been lucky enough to go to some markets multiple times? So you've picked up people coming back who've experienced the product? Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, there is there is a lot of repeat purchases. And, and I would say, not that I have a lot of sales online, but quite a few of my, my online sales have come from people who have bought at markets. I've been giving away leaflets and, and stuff like that. So I've got um, repeat purchases Um I'm multi-channel, maybe. Am I bricks and clicks? <laughs> yeah, I think you are bricks and clicks. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, it's it's um, it's been a, a really really good learning experience. Um, yeah, and I, I I I would recommend doing it. I I would as well. I'll second you on that one. And what? Let's just take to go back even further. What led you to want to create UXB skincare and to start this journey? Well, it, it was it all came to me in a Turkish spa, and uh, in <laughs> as Turkey. all the best ideas do. <laughs> <laughs> so I came, I came out of a Turkish spa, and, and my skin was really, really soft. And, and and they try and sell you some soap, so they did sell me loads of soaps actually, um, all with natural ingredients, and they all seemed to work. Um, so I was looking for a, a little side project, and um, came home, um, learned how to make soap first, and and then all the rest of the things that I sell, so creams and. Um, lotions and all those kind of things so it's it was all it was all a, a personal experience that's that's uh, you know lent me my first big e-commerce thing that i wanted to do really so it's been a, a bit of a long journey because that was 2016 when i we walked mm -hmm. out of that turkish bar and here we are 2020 when i'm, I'm just about to spend some money on marketing I'm sure the fact it's taken this long and you've been iterating the products and working out how to get them right and doing all that great market research is just going to make things fly so much quicker than if you'd gone Facebook ads on day one. Yeah, I have huge faith in the in the in the product as well, um, because the you know and I've got great feedback. So um, I I was a bit nervous about doing this because it's all bootstrapped and this is my money and as you, you know, we're gonna, I'm going to put down quite a bit of money on this marketing. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I want to make sure that it's it's everything's in place um, from a, a good product to um, the website to the marketing and the creative and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I, I was I, I was I was nervous, but I'm going to go for it now. Excellent. Well, look, before we talk about how you're going to go for it, let's just make sure the listeners are familiar with, with your business as it is now, because this is, after all, our kind of before episode. So where in the world are you and where are you selling to? 
So I'm in the UK and selling mainly to the UK. I've had a couple of orders from Germany for some reason, but uh, nice. yeah. Cool. And um, we've talked about the product. So what platform do you sell on at the moment? So I'm on Shopify. Very nice. Was that an obvious choice to go for Shopify? Um, it was. Um, I have heard really good things from, from people on your, your show. It seems to be the, the one everyone's going for. And um, uh, yeah, there was, there was, I didn't want to host anything. I didn't want to muck about with code. So yeah. Yeah, it does enable you to focus on the stuff you want to focus on rather than worrying about payment providers or coding or a lot of a lot of faffy stuff. Anyone out there who wants to try out Shopify, head to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash Shopify for a great deal. Um, now, given you're on Shopify, although it's early days, I'm guessing there may be a widget or plugin you've already fallen in love with? There is a few that I use. So um, <laughs> the reviews I've got, judge mm-hmm. me. Um there's an unproven one called Personalizer, which is interesting because it's um, you don't pay for it unless it pays for itself. Basically, it's performance-based um, AI merchandising. Um, I'm using Shogun Page Builder for my landing pages. I've also, I've got the Google Shopping feed. Um, just turned that on and um, learning a bit about that. And then I use something a bit specific to my industry, which is Crafty Base, which syncs up to. Crafty base, which is what um, I do my manufacturing and or, or ingredients ordering via. Uh-huh, very cool. So you're very much primed, ready to go big. Yeah. One one other thing is um, I've got a reoccurring order app from Bold um, just to try and get, because it's, it's a consumable product. So I'm hopefully get some subscription revenue back. Very nice. So yeah, as, as I was saying, very much primed, ready to just get some traffic in there and see the sales coming in. I've done some thinking. I've done some thinking. <laughs> yes. And plenty of listening as well, I think, looking at oh. some of the things you put in place. Yep. And uh, we said you're the only person in the business. So are you doing everything? Have you got plans to outsource or is it literally for the time being continuing the bootstrapping? Yeah, I, I do have occasionally have um, help making stuff. Um, when I'm do, when I was doing big markets, and I'm, I'm sure um, when when I if I reach my three month goal, um, I will need to uh, have help with that and maybe um, some third party logistics. Um, but yeah, at the moment, it's it's me. Keep it simple. Keep it bootstrapped. Keeping it bootstrapped. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's. Um, I, I don't. I don't want to. Um, don't want to give any equity away in something that's worth so much. I can, I can talk through how much I'm making <laughs> if you wanted. Um, well, yeah, let's see. What, what are the sales looking like at the moment? So here's my here's my stats at the moment, and we'll see if we can we can smash these these in in three months. So I've got like 650 um, visitors a month, and they're coming from referrals is 35 percent, direct 23 percent, some from social and some from organic search. Uh, monthly revenue, a huge monthly revenue of eighty-one pounds, uh, an add to basket rate of three percent, and a basket to checkout rate of forty-nine percent. So those two stats I'll be working on uh, works mm-hmm. out about nine orders a month. Um, and the other assets I've got is a is a bit of an email list. I did a giveaway online, and I've got like fifteen hundred emails. Oh, nice! That's a good starting point. Yeah, it was a competition, and um, so I've been I've been doing broadcast emails to to those people but it needs it needs pruning i think that email list competitions however targeted you make them on your own product there's always some pruning to be done yeah but it it's a great way to quickly build up the list though even if you do end up losing 50 percent of them over the next six months exactly yeah so that's where we are um again it's it's not um it's not a living wage, but um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to blow that out of the water in the next three months. So, come on, what are your whilst we're talking numbers? What's the targets for the next three months? So, I know you always say, "How would you get from a hundred orders to a thousand orders?" Mm-hmm. I, what I'm aiming for is two hundred orders, um, cool. with an average order value of about twenty pounds or greater than twenty pounds. Um, and I really want the um advertising to be paying for itself there's so many things i don't know about how this is going to pan out um i haven't put too many kind of big goals down in writing Mm -hmm. but um yeah 
Well, that's the thing. At this stage, you haven't got you haven't got the online data yeah. to be able to put too much rigor around the goals. So it's um, whereas because you've been putting all the effort in making sure you know how to market it and you know uh, what messages to use and which products work. Mm. Now the next three months is about quickly testing and learning how to get the traffic effectively. So I think I think those are perfectly reasonable goals. Well, I mean, it, it was this. That's why I think this podcast hopefully will help people at my stage because there was there's so many things like how much do you have to spend, how long will it take to uh, see a return on ad spend, um, what does a good return look like, what is my customer lifetime value. There's so many things I don't know, so it is going to be three months. Well, a, a month of testing and hopefully some optimizing. I think there's going to be lots of optimizing in your future over the next three months. Is that what you see my future as being? I think I see a lot of testing and optimizing coming up. Okay. Um, Because the optimization never ends. Okay. Um, Good to know. But it's it's the fun bit, I think, anyway. Uh, So I suppose we should just say three months. We are recording this on the 14th of January. So very very soon after we record this, all you guys are going to be listening to it. So is the three-month um, end date, are we talking end of March? We're we talking 14th of March. Let's say end of March. Um, end of March, cool. Yeah. I've, I've still got a little bit to do before I kick off the advertising. I've still got some landing pages to build and um, uh, some other, you know, tweaks to uh, about pages and product pages, um, Just 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 so I've got everything nailed before I – start spending a hundred pounds a day on yeah. Facebook ads. And then, but that means then you can just really focus on the testing and the optimization without worrying about the landing pages, which I'm sure will end up getting tweaked as, as the weeks roll by. Probably. But, um, yes. Um, I'll be, I'll be looking at them. I've used a combination of um, your book and um, the Hammersley brothers book to, to make sure that, I understand the marketing and I understand the website optimization side of it. So I'll definitely be keeping an eye on on, on not optimizing both of those things as, as we go through. Yeah, and I think, um, I do think, well, I know Ian quite well. And I think our Ian Hammersley, who's one of the Hammersley brothers, for those of you listening. And um, we often say how well our two books work together. Mm. So um, I'll make sure there's links to those in the show notes for everyone listening. And I also did a, did a, had a chat with Ian on the show about his book. So I will, uh, I'll put a link to that in the show notes too for all of you. And I was going to bring up his book because you had the, the add to basket ratio and the basket to checkout ratio, which is straight out of his book, <laughs> and which, um, which is such a great way of actually nailing the conversion rates without yeah. just going... I'm going to increase the conversion rate, which is all a bit, it's a great aim to have generally, but it's a bit fluffy. And Ian and uh, Mark Hammersley's approach really does drill it down. I I really like the way they do those stats. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a game changer for me, to be honest, to see, see some actual stats, some, some benchmark stats about all the websites they have looked at. Um, I I need something to, to aim for. Like I've been, I've been getting tidbits of, information from podcasts and all all sorts of things so i know i don't know if any of this is true but i I believe what he's he's saying but things like you need to tell um 50 um uh, conversions in a week before facebook knows something Mm -hmm. about the audience that kind of stuff i don't know it's true but we'll find out I don't don't think Facebook's ever said the number, but it's a good ballpark. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. would certainly say. And um, I've just whilst uh, or Simon was was uh, telling us about that, I've just grabbed a copy of uh, the Hammersley's book so I can read out the title because I'm guessing probably all of you out there going, "What two books are you talking about?" So, the one by Ian and Mark Hammersley is called "The Ultimate Guide to E-Commerce Growth: Seven Unexpected KPIs to Scale an E-Commerce Shop to Ten Million Pounds Plus." Uh, and my book that, that Simon was very kindly mentioning is called E-Commerce Marketing, How to Get Traffic That Buys to Your Website. And both those books are currently available as ebook and paperback on Amazon. And mine is available as audiobook, Everywhere But Audible, which is a story we are not getting into on the podcast. But it's available everywhere but Audible at the moment and hopefully will be on Audible soon, but isn't quite yet. So there we go. That's the book plugs done. So... Um, Simon, we've talked about where you're at right now. We've talked about um, the the goal, which is to get to 200 orders per month. And you've alluded to a couple of things you're planning on doing 
to grow that. But what's your what's your plan for the next three months? Okay, so the first the first one was wondering how much I have to spend, um, and I've, I think I've nailed it down to a hundred pounds a day, so about three thousand pounds a month. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna spend it mainly on Facebook and Instagram. Um, so month one will probably be like very broad, maybe a little bit of interest targeting, just to get um, enough traffic to the website so that the Facebook pixel um, understands my audience um, and hopefully then use dynamic audiences based on actions on my website month two and three, hopefully get the return on ad spend down and a, and a better converting audience. Um, uh, when it comes to um, the creative, I'm going to mm-hmm. go with a kind of um, – I've heard it called hook story offer. Um, and I've been using another resource called brand story to come up with, um, ways of, um, doing, I learned this from your book as well, interruption marketing. Um, and I didn't even know what, um, uh, direct response marketing was until, um, I, I started looking into this, but, um, I'm definitely going to, um, play with offers and, um, I've set up, uh, Clavio email flows as well for um, all of the kind of abandoned basket welcome um, all of that kind of follow up you know 30 days after purchase have you run out type things um, so hopefully uh, by month three I should have some repeat purchases um, and the adverts paying for themselves breaking even hopefully <laughs> If I've done it right. <laughs> um, I've, I've off, I'm doing bundles. I want to drive the um, the first first things. I'm going to start um, advertising in my cleansers, and they're 14 pounds for a, for a cleanser. Mm-hmm. Probably lasts about a month. Um, but I want the um, average order value to be higher than 20 quid. So I've, I've putting together some product bundles. Um, I've done um, made the postage free above 20 pounds. Um, if anyone's got any other tips around how I drive that up, um, but um, so I'm try- that's that's the kind of metrics I'm I'm, I'm looking at average order value, um, and uh, I want the advertising paying for itself um, after three months. Nice. So it's very much a Facebook and Instagram ads and good automated emails strategy. I did. Um, as I said, I, m- I turned on Google Shopping um, feed. Um, I listened to one of the other podcasts. There was Mind Gear, or there was a lady from I don't know. There was there was someone Digital in, Gearbox, Becky Digital Hopkins. Gearbox, yes. Yeah. And, she, and she mentioned some optimization tricks, and I actually did those. Um, um, and I, I took my Google ad spend down from seventeen pounds a week with no revenue down to five pounds, and made a couple of sales the, f- the first week I, I I did the optimization. So. Um, I'm fairly hopeful. I'm fairly hopeful that that I've put enough uh, thinking into this that it, it should work. The optimization timetable for Google search, uh, Google uh, shopping campaigns versus Facebook ads. There's an awful lot more work to be done on the Facebook ads optimization than there's in the Google shopping campaigns. Um, with the caveat that you have quite a small number of SKUs. Yeah, which makes the Google Shopping campaigns optimization relatively straightforward. Yeah. Um, so anyone out there who's got a lot of SKUs, uh, <laughs> then you you might find actually they're a little bit similar in terms of time. But yeah, I think once with the with the number of SKUs you've got, Simon, which actually just for the audience, how many SKUs are we talking? We're talking about twenty six, I think, um, something like that. Um, but it, it, it was it was I, was I was missing a field in in Shopify that allowed it to me to to classify them into kind of cleansers and body scrubs and um, uh, and once it did that I was able to give a CPC for each particular category and do negative keywords per category and and it and it brought my cost down and it brought put performance up. Once you get your head around how to optimize Google Shopping campaigns, it's it's a beautiful thing. Mm. Yeah, I might spend more money on that in the future. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Once it's kind of 
Whereas on Facebook ads, to spend more money, you often have to create new creative and everything. With Google Shopping ads, it's just a budget decision, which is uh, which is kind of cool. Um, for those of you listening, I will also put in the show notes, this is going to be such a link-heavy show notes, a link to the episode where Becky's sharing those great Google Shopping campaign tips. Because £17 per week with no sales to £5 per week with sales is, quite frankly, very attractive. <laughs> those kind of ratio changes i think all of us would quite quite like so so there's a bit of uh, google shopping campaigns going on as well with the full clavio automation set up and ready to roll so that's once you've got some data going through that you can make some tweaks and optimize it but the main focus of your f- effort and activity is going to be uh, working those facebook and instagram ads isn't it it is um and Apart from the audience levers, I think the creative is is where I need to to concentrate. So, um, I'm 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 at the moment brainstorming um, the creative. I'm going to hopefully in the first month have five bits of, you know, a headline and five images or five headlines, five images, um, some video, um, and hopefully be able to to dan- dynamically create some 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 ads that, that keep it fresh and 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 find out which creative is working because again another unknown for me but um and doing it that way with the the dynamic piece does allow you to get facebook to do some of the heavy lifting for you so whilst you're doing all this yourself you're making great use of the software to do a load of the work for you yeah i was listening to another podcast um it was called um, e-commerce influence, and they have a, a Facebook expert and a, a, a Clavio email automation expert. And I've learned quite a lot there um, about how much creative if you need per, you know, if, if you're spending a lot of money and, and trying to grow. Um, so I'm, I'm fully committed to producing creative for ads and testing it hard, and um, and the, the, may the best man win. Uh, yeah, so. That's um, something I, I need to work on. E-commerce master plan is supported by some of the greatest companies in the e-commerce sector. Here's a reminder of who they are. Omnisend, the marketing automation platform tailored for e-commerce. Omnisend provides sophisticated omnichannel marketing automation tools for sales-driven marketers that have outgrown generic email marketing platforms. Engage your customers and boost your e-commerce sales with dynamic emails, text messages, Facebook Messenger and retargeting ads on Facebook and Google, all from just one platform. Try Omnisend for free for 14 days. Just visit omnisend.com forward slash master plan and get started. In the last ad break, you heard a review from a retailer just like you of my new book, E-commerce Marketing, How to Get Traffic That Buys to Your Website. It's a Kindle bestseller in the UK, USA and Australia. And as past podcast guest Chantal put it, if you run an e-commerce business, buy this book. The Kindle and paperback are available from your local Amazon store, plus it's now available everywhere on audiobook too. Just search e-commerce marketing on your favourite audiobook app and click on the white cover with the blue and pink text. It's time time for the Top Tips Round. Now, I love this section because it gives me and our listeners some really quick ideas for taking our businesses to the next level. So, Simon, are you ready for the top tips? I am. Excellent. Because, um, well, I can't believe, quite frankly, how many links and things you've recommended already in this episode. So, like I said, guys, this is going to be link heavy. You are going to want to go and check out those show notes. And you can find the show notes at ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast, where you will find a link to this show. But right now we should do the top tip. So first up is the book top tip. If everyone listening to this podcast agreed to take Friday off and read a book to make their business better, which book would you recommend? Well, I think apart from your one, um, Mm -hmm. another one that I've read, it's quite a quick read, so you probably just need Friday afternoon, is um, Scientific Advertising by Claude C. Hopkins, an old book, but a goodie. That one's been recommended recently on the podcast as well, I think. It seems and it seems to keep appearing on Amazon. I think someone's put some advertising dollars behind it. <laughs> is it? It's a good book. It's a lovely yellow book, isn't it? With a yeah. kind of like a graph on Thin. the cover. And I believe you I think because um 
uh, everyone listening, before we before we hit the record button, Tom was saying you had a list of five books, and I know you've mentioned three of them in the interview, so there must be another one still to come. The one that I'm using quite a lot at the moment is Story Brand, and it's a book and it's a website, and it allows you to create a um, a, a brand story that is based around how they write movies, um, and it's really helpful to to think about. Um, how you position your brand in front of users with them being the hero and you being a, a guide to to lead them to a better life. So it's um, it's making a lot of sense to me. Story Story Brand by Miller Donald. And I believe that's that one's inspired you to read do your about us page and I'm assuming some kind of email welcome sequence as well. Totally. Yeah. It's um, that's that's all going to change based on this um, and you fill out a website um, with who's the villain, who's the hero who's the guide and that kind of thing. And it's, yeah, it's very good. Sounds like quite a fun approach to something I know a lot of people struggle with. Yeah, it breaks it down simply. It's really, really handy. Cool. Okay, then the traffic top tip, which marketing method do you either prize above all others or think doesn't get the press it deserves? When I was doing markets, word of mouth, um, if people telling mm-hmm. people is is the, is the best way. I used to have people you know, telling their friends to come and visit me at the, at the, at the markets. Um, so I, w- I would say that's got the most the most value, long-lasting value. So true. Uh, okay, the tool top tip, maybe a collaboration tool, a social media plug in a phone app, or just a way of working. Is there a cool little tool you use that makes you and your team more efficient from day to day? Um, well, I'm a, an Android boy and the Google boy, so I use um, the, the Keep app quite a lot to to sync notes between computers and phones and stuff like that so that would be mine i'll second that i'm an android google girl too well you're a boy but i'm a girl you know (laughs) it it makes sense (laughs) keep keep i only got into quite late in the day and um yes it's 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 a powerful thing Mm, yeah yeah Yeah. i wish i'd I'd got my head around it sooner. Um, okay, the growth top tip. If you met someone today who's focused on growing their e-commerce business from 100 orders per month to 1,000, what would be your number one tip for them? Spend £100 a day on Facebook adverts. Make sure those Facebook adverts are, are brilliant um, and uh, get in front of people that are scrolling through and don't really care about your brand, but stop them and, uh, and makes them go to your website and then spend more money and uh, convert them from shining a light, as I've learned from your book, to your <laughs> first sale to a repeat purchaser. That's, um, but I think you have to spend the money. You do. It's um, If you want to grow at any great speed, some money has to be in the game. And Google and Facebook is where you're probably going to be spending that money. Okay. Well, Simon, we had your great top tips and we've also learned a lot about what you're planning on doing over the, the next three months. And all of you out there listening, you should be listening back because I think Simon's going to be back in sometime around about late March, early April, I think, to record. And then we'll get that out to you as soon as possible. So you can find out how those first three months have gone. And, and if he's even up for doing it again in three months time, <laughs> continuing the journey, we will see. There's, um, I, can, I can see him on the video just kind of, uh, kind of grinning, grinning slightly nervously. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what? In my mind, the money is sunk. I've spent the, th- the nine grand, however much it's going to cost mm-hmm. over the three months. So I will be back, um, whether it's good or bad. Excellent. And we're, I know the, the listeners and I will really appreciate you sharing the story and uh, working out what happens next. So, um, Simon, those who want to kind of check out what you're up to and the journey, where can they find uh, you and uh, UXB? So we're on um, Instagram, uh, UXB Skincare. Um, our website is uxbskincare.com and you can email me at simon at uxbskincare.com. Marvellous. Well, Simon, I certainly look forward to finding out how it's gone in three months' time, and I'll be having a poke around to see see what you're up to in the meantime. Um, but thanks so much for, for agreeing to do this for the listeners, because I'm sure they're going to learn a lot if they haven't already learned an awful lot from, from our chat so far today. Um, so thanks so much for coming on and being so so generous with it all. No, thank you. I hope I hope it helps. I, for one, cannot wait until in a couple of months' time, Simon comes back to tell us all how he's got got on with hitting his 200 orders per month goal. Exciting time to head for him. I think he's going to spend an awful lot of time staring at those Facebook ads, tweaking things and tweaking things and tweaking things, and quite probably going and tweaking his Klaviyo automations as well. And how many tips and ideas and 
things did he give? How many links have I got to go and set up in the show notes page for all of you? Well, look, you can get your hands on the notes from today's show, including the top tips, links, and details of the related episodes we mentioned. Then those are at ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast. I hope you've enjoyed this interview from our 2020 e-commerce master plan growth series sponsored by Omnisend. We have another eight episodes in the series for you. And right now, if you're listening to this as soon as it comes out, they're almost all live. So go and check them out. We find we get a lot of people finding us for the very first time during our growth series. So if that's you, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also let me know what you think of the show by adding a review. And you can do that in your podcast player of choice, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever else you're using to listen. Simon is a guest on the show today because he's a fan of the show and he filled in our application form to be a guest. If you'd like to follow in his footsteps and join me here on the show, then go to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast and click on the link to become a guest. It's as simple as that. I hope you're having a great week and keep optimizing. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce master plan podcast. Find out more at ecommercemasterplan.com slash podcast.